So we've seen how you can make classes that work much like functions and how even by extending functions we can use them as functions. Turns out that the collections all extend function types so that you they not only have the ability to index into them, they can actually be used as functions. One of the things if you have previous programming experience that you might have wondered was why is it that the creators of Scala decided to make it so that you get elements out of an array, for example, with parentheses. In most other language you, languages, you would use square brackets. And part of the reason for this is because they're saying that this isn't special. It's just a function application. You're just passing one to it, and that's what the indexing is. If you look in the API, so I happen to be under buffer here, and you look under the linear supertypes, you'll see this has int to a. If we were, instead of looking at buffer, if we were to look at map, and we look at the linear supertypes, somewhere in here there should be an a arrow b. There it is. Okay, so all of these wind up being function types, and that does give you some interesting capabilities. So, for example, we have our buff here, Let's actually make something that's a little bit larger. Let's go with array That's good. Okay, so I have a reasonably large array there and then I am going to pull Let's see. So how about an array of Seven eight, or eight seven six dot map of a. Okay, now let's think about this for a second. What what does this mean? It's going to pass eight into a. Well, that means that it should pull out the eighth element, which happens to be the value nine here, and then it's going to pass seven into a, which will pull out the eight, and then six into a, which will pull out the seven. So we should get back the collection nine eight seven, and sure enough, we do. You can use this for you know, quite a few things, but basically it gives you the ability to take one collection and use that to index into another collection just using map. And so, so this is the type of thing that there are certain programming languages, for example, MATLAB that was built for matrix operations. It has the ability to do indexing in, in interesting ways like this to get things like slices or whatnot. You can do the exact same thing in Scala. You can do it with just by calling map. And the reason that it works that way is because all of these collection types are functions. So you can use them as the function that gets passed into the map. And you should play around with this because it doesn't just work with arrays. It would work with maps too. And so if I had, let's see, I would need a fairly large map in order to to make this interesting and I don't think I have something that's too large let's now do I have in map here yeah one two three now it's not all that much but I could take the any collection any sequence and uh, three to one and then map it across in map and I get the values in the order that I looked up the keys okay so this isn't just something you can do with like arrays and lists or buffers you can also do this with uh, with strings you could technically do this with a set so let's say I made, we'll call this inset is the set of one, three, four, five. And now let's take the same thing we had, three, two, one, but we're going to map it not across in map, but in set. And you should pause for a second and think, what is this actually going to do? before you see the answer, which is true, false, true. Because three is in the set, two is not in the set, one is in the set. And remember, when you index into a set, 
it gives you back a true or false depending upon whether the value is there. So this is something that you can kind of generally apply to any of the collections and it really does provide you a lot of power but you, you have to kind of change how you think about things to really be able to utilize this ability.